Good morning, and I hope we are a go. This is going to be Third John, Part Two, Eternally Driven, and it is August eighteenth. And good morning to you all in this morning devotion. I wanted to uh, define what this word "driven" is. I love the second use of the term "driven." In the English dictionary, it's a person relentlessly compelled by the need to accomplish a goal, very hardworking and ambitious. And Gaius was a guy in this book. So his name is Gaius. John's writing to a guy, his friend, dear friend named Gaius, who is certainly eternally driven. He is relentless to accomplish his goal And that goal always is bringing people to know Christ. And he did this through through the lens of, uh, through the action of hospitality. I don't know if you caught that in our last uh, session, but this dude was one hospitable guy. And he took in other uh, uh, preachers that were going around and uh, getting out the good news. and, And this guy's heart was just for them. In verse 7, it says, It was for the sake of the name that they went out, meaning the preachers went out because of the name of Christ. And Jesus told us to go out into the world and to make disciples of all people. And so that was a command of the Lord. And and so if you think about that, hey, Kurt, if you think about that, that means uh, uh, our hearts um uh, by the command of the Lord, should be eternally driven. We should have a that kind of relentless pursuit, that goal that's always in our heart and in our mind daily, that when we um, are alive and, and here on this planet, that we have this idea of like, hey, how can I bring people to know Christ? And this was Gaius's heart. Gaius had this idea of like, hey, how could I bring people to know the Lord? You know, and it's by, you know, for him it was hospitality of that day so that the the preachers had a safe place to go to. Gaius would be that safe home. And John, being the overseer of the missionary movement in the area, you know, was writing these letters to help them all communicate on, hey, these people are right on. And that's what John was saying. These people are in the truth, these preachers. So, hey, take care of them. Help them out. And Gaius was eternally focused and so if you're hold on one minute that was funny I had the tea on and I heard this little and I was like, oh, my God, the tea's going. So sorry about that. But, you know, if you're eternally focused, right, if, you're, if your mind is on eternity, then all of a sudden your heart is like, hey, you know, like Gaius, hey, how can I help this out? How can I be a part of this? You know, but do you, do you see that everything's kind of eternally focused? It's driven by an eternal mindset, an eternal worldview, that there is a hell to gain or a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And let me say that again, a hell to shun and an eternity in heaven to gain. And, you know, so, you know, I love what uh, Blaise Pascal says, and I've said it many times on my Blaise Pascal time on Saturday, but death is eternal no matter what state it's in. And because that's true, you need to always look at your life and go, hey, what am I living for? Eternity is long. This period of time on the earth, short. And so, hey, are you eternally focused? I was talking to a a dude the other day in my neighborhood, and 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 man, it just burdens me to to think of him not knowing the the Lord and not experiencing the peace of Christ and not experiencing the forgiveness of sins. And when I look at him, I just don't see um uh, uh, a born again life um i don't think i don't see that kind of joy in his heart and 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 it just moves me and i think the reason why it moves me is is you know is is because um there's this eternity that's there that's um 
and and I know that 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 guy, you know, he he only has a short time here on this planet, and then that's it. And so it drives you as a, you know that idea drives you to want to help someone, and, and the best help and hospitality we can do is bring someone to Christ. Um. So hey, blessings from S- Southern California, Michael. You take care, buddy. Um. You know, but is to bring someone to the Lord. So I love that, that it says that they went out for the name of the Lord. They went out for the the sake of the name, right? And they went out and the, and and they were eternally, their, their mind was just set on eternity. And the Bible says, blessed are the feet of those who bring good news. It's a, actually a passage from the book of Isaiah that talks about that they will hear from the Lord. And blessed are the feet. Um, uh, um of of that person that brings that good news and actually the real quote is how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim peace and who bring good tidings who proclaim salvation and who say to Zion your God reigns and so you see that wonderful mindset of the person that's bringing this kind of salvation you know who shared with you do you ever just thank the Lord for that that person who is eternally minded that shared with you and um, are you grateful for those people in your life who have that eternity mindset that mindset with God um, and um, and that took the time to to break it down and you know a lot of times we get maybe nervous around people or we we think man what are they gonna think of us if we share you know uh, Christ Um, but you know it's like people share things all the time you know, people share everything. Uh, people share what they like, what they dislike. I mean, social media is all about that. It's all about just sharing things. So, man, sharing, you know, just, I mean, your love for Jesus is, is um, man, can come real natural, you know, to us. And, um, you know, so uh, think of who shared with you, too. They, they have that wonderful eternal mindset. And uh, the greatest act of hospitality you could ever do is to invite people to to be born again. Um, do you want a different life? Do you want uh, to live for eternity? Do you want your sins forgiven? Um, and there is a God, and that God loves you. And, uh, you know, it's just beautiful. Now, there's hindrances to this uh, wonderful mindset of just being eternally driven um, and that is, uh, we get this in the next part of actually Third John, verse 9. It says, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will have nothing to do with us. First problem, wanting to be first, right? Always wanting to be first. Man, this is a hard thing for us human beings. And I, I have to confess, this is a tough thing for me, is always wanting to be first, you know, why why not put yourself down and maybe be second or maybe be third or maybe be fourth or maybe be fifth and sixth? Um, you know, why not go down the list? I wrote the church by Diotrephes who loves to be first. This guy has to be the dominant one. He's the one who has to be the guy who's calling all the shots. He's the guy who everything has to go through and 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 he's kind of the iron fist of everything right will have nothing to do with us john says diatrophies i wrote him but man he he wants nothing to do he loves to be first he's going to control everything and um and you know and that's that's a hindrance of having an eternal mindset is that person who wants to control everything and you know if you're a controller out there if you want to control everything Man, good luck. I mean, it, you know, we might think things are going good, but really what we're saying is just things are in our control at the moment. Usually that's what we mean by when we say things are good. Um, we're just saying everything's going according to what we think it should go to right now. Um, um, but, you know, we're we're not in much control over much, as we all probably know more today maybe than ever, is that we don't, we don't we don't have much control over all things um we have to to be eternally mindset we have to be able to allow um and be flexible uh, allow god to do what god does on the wor- in the world in our lives 
and we have to trust him uh, with things. But there's people that are in the church, John says, the, there's leadership that wants to be first, and they love to be first. So they don't just want to be first, but they love to be first. So what a hindrance, right? That, that desire for control, that desire for power, um, all those things, um, that gets in the way of being eternally focused. Instead of being a servant, you become, you lord over the flock. Are there churches like that today, that lord over the flock, that want to have strict guidelines and discipleship ministries and all those kind of things like that? Um, you know, uh, yeah, there definitely is, right? Those, so notice what else it says. So if I come, I will call attention to what he is doing, John says. And he says, hey, man, I'm going to call him on the carpet on this, gossiping maliciously about us. So another thing that gets you away from being... Uh, eternally driven, eternally mindset, is that you are gossiping maliciously. You're talking about things that you don't really need to be talking about, right? Gossiping about, what does John say? They're gossiping about us. They're putting us down. You know, they're putting things down. And You know, I mean, we can spend a lot of time in, in the day looking at videos, watch, listening to podcasts, different news things that are just about putting people down and um and you know you might find it in yourself too that you know with the political race going on that you might find kind of it fun to to you know be a part of the malicious gossiping you know political crew that's out there and John would have none of it and John was like that's not that's not Christ man that's not Christ to go that direction. You know, pray for all people, but let's not maliciously gossip about people. I don't know these people. I don't know them at all. Um, I could look at their track record for what they do in office and those type of things. But, you know, and I can make judgments off that. Certainly so. But I, I can't be maliciously just attacking people and gossiping about people. Right. So you want to you want to get you want to get into being eternally driven uh, and, and get your mind focused on evangelism and outreach and and going out, then you have to get rid of the malicious talking. Uh, we're going to talk about that tomorrow in the book of Titus. Um, Scott and I, that, you know, the malicious gossiping that goes around hinders ministry. And so we see that. Um, now, is there another thing? He says they're not satisfied with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. So in two other things he does, right? Um, he also stops those who, who want to do so, or he refuses to welcome the brothers, meaning those that really know the Lord are those that are coming in to teach the word. This guy wants nothing to do with it. He wants, again, control. So we see he wants power, we see he wants control, and he puts these people out of the church. So it's like this guy's running the show, man, and Like, and it's like hardcore. It's like a monarchy on hardcore steroids, right? And John says no. And w man, if if you want to be uh, eternal mind minded, you got to let, you got to enjoy watching other people do their thing and share their gifts in Christ. You can't think that you have all the gifts and that it's all about what you do. But you got to realize there's other people with other gifts and those gifts are are there because you lack in those gifts and they're there. This guy, this leader, Diotrephes, should have went, hey man, these guys have gifts that I don't have. And they're out sharing the the word of the Lord and I'm eternally driven. So the goal is to 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 share Christ and teach Christ. And that's what these guys are doing. So right on, I'm totally aboard. But instead he said, man, these guys want a piece of my action. These guys want a piece of what I have. And man, I got this good thing going here and I don't want to disrupt it. So hey, these guys, no way. They can't come in. You know, or hey, I, I, you know, and, and then he was talking bad about the apostles, about John. Now, it's interesting. John never questions the guy's salvation. He never says Diotrephes isn't saved right out. But he certainly is going to tell him that he's he's blind, you know, that he's he's totally not seeing God at all. And um, but you see that when you you know, when you 
uh, act in these ways, when we put on these ways in our own life, when we start being lovers of ourselves first, right? When we start being prideful people um, because we want to be first in everything, right? We become really shallow, um, um, you know, what is it, uh, where we can't see really correctly. Um, and we just can't see eternity right when we start making these kind of judgments that we see that Diotrephes is doing right? He's slandering. When you're slandering, you're not being eternally driven, you know? When you're, not, when you're not seeing other people's gifts, you're not being eternally driven. When you're not looking to build other people up and encourage them to go on in their way in Christ and to, to use your resources for such things, then we're not being eternally driven. So, man, what an important uh, devo this morning on just being eternally driven, you know, and I love it, you know. So, hey, get your mind focused on in on the eternity, be on the eternal, because that's the thing that's going to be forever. And this is the temporary. The best way we can use this time in the temporary is to think about that eternity and go, hey, you know what? Let me start living like eternity right now. Let me start talking about eternity. Let me start thinking about eternity. Let me start... Um, having that be the driving focus, right? The goal, uh, eternally driven. Got that goal in you, right? I'm going there and I want to bring you with me. That kind of idea. So, hey, may God help us w when it comes to sharing our faith and uh, that God will give us gifts too and a real heart for people, a real love for them too, compassion. So take care. Have a great day, okay?